All right, everybody, we are live. I'm going to be doing the commentary for the UFC fights for tonight. Um, we just saw a crazy fight that just happened um, between William Gomez and Jarno Ahrens. And um, there was a very tight triangle at the end of that fight. And uh, to be honest, I thought that was going to be finished. And uh, the guy, what was his name? William Gomez uh, escaped at the very last minute. Props to him. And uh, survived and won the fight. That triangle was very deep, especially when you're able to get that angle where you guys go perpendicular in a T-shape. Usually when the guy gets that angle, the fight is pretty much over. Okay. So um, we got the UFC coming on um, Hulu right now. It's on ESPN Plus. So anywhere you have ESPN Plus, you will be able to see the fights. And the main event tonight is Cyril Gan versus um, Tai Tuivasa, I want to say. Yeah. Cyril Gan versus Tai Tuivasa. The co-main event is quite possibly the most wild with Robert Whitaker and Marvin Vittori. I'm a huge fan of Robert Whitaker. Uh, he, I think he has the best one-two head kick in all of MMA or just in all of fighting. He has some karate roots like myself, so it's hard not to support him. But he's got a really tough challenge in Marvin Vittori. Um, in that co-main event, which is coming up soon. Then um, the third fight fight from the top is Nasser Dain Imaivov versus ja Jaqueen Buckley. My apologies if I said any of the names wrong, but man, another great uh, fight. Jaqueen Buckley is the owner of the craziest most devastating knockout i think i've ever seen where he threw a spinning back kick uh flip <laughs> technique off of someone catching and parrying his kick so uh, hopefully we get to see some more of that crazy flashy stuff from him but right now we have alessio de churchio versus roman kopov and um, Alessio is 31, 32 to Romans 31. They're both six feet tall. They both weigh 186. And Roman has a one-inch reach advantage. And here we got Bruce Buffer doing his announcing. You gotta love Bruce Buffer, the greatest commentator in sports history. Um, I got some Pellegrino here, my favorite drink. And if you want to use my Amazon link and support the channel in any way, um, it really helps out the channel. And you can click that in the description of this video. It will bring you right to the Pellegrino that I am drinking. So it should be interesting. We got uh, Alessio Di Churchio as it looks like a uh, red-blooded Italian. And I'm Italian myself. So, got to go with the Italians. Oh, they're showing all the Italians in the audience with the Italian flags. Got to love that. You know, it's interesting. Fighting is... Um, got some coffee here as well. Fighting is such a personal thing, but there is such a nationalism where your countrymen or your, your nationality uh, plays a factor into who you root and who you support. Anyway, the fight's beginning, first round right now. Um, we have the Italian, let's see, how am I going to call these guys? <laughs> uh, in green shorts, the Italian, um, Alessio, Alessio versus Roman. Alessio versus Roman, okay. So we got Alessio. Um, in the green shorts here and Roman in the red shorts. They are coming out with a southpaw versus orthodox stance. 
So um, there's a factor here where you see the front hand, the jab hand uh, is coming in on the same track and it allows these leg kicks, these leg kicks to that lead leg that you're seeing right now. There's a whole thing in the relationship of the stance that you have with your opponent that affects the types of strikes and the types of techniques that you can go for. Uh, both guys throwing some leg kicks and then countering with some punches straight down the middle. Best way to counter a guy who leg kicks often is to come straight down the middle with some one-twos. And uh, you see that tactic being employed by both fighters right now. Alessio de Churchio and Roman Kopolov. These names are, are not the easiest, but um, we are a couple minutes in. We have three minutes, 23 seconds left in the first round of a three-round fight. Each round is five minutes. And it seems that Alessio in the green is a little bit more calm, a little bit more composed, and... Um, Roman is fighting at a, at a faster pace. Faster doesn't necessarily always mean better, but um, he's definitely more active and busy with his hands. Alicia goes in, he throws a round kick, it, it gets caught, and then he gets countered with that uh, cross right to the face. And you really see this dynamic of the round kick to that lead leg. Oh, and a slip, and then another slip. That's crazy. There must be an area on the octagon where there's an area where it's slippery because one guy threw a, a kick, he slipped, and then the other guy went to go after him after he slipped, and he slipped on the same spot. So both guys slipped within a, the same second in the fight. I've actually never seen that before. That's wild. So nobody really uh, taking the lead here as the guy who's winning or dominating the round. Oh, but a nice counter with an overhand right from Alessio de Churchio and an attempted takedown. Some great footwork from Roman as well to make sure you circle out to the side and really take away that forward pressure of his opponent. That's a great tactic. Oh, and a nice body kick. This situation in, in um, judo is called Ken Kenyatsu, where they both have the similar leg in front. So um, Roman has his right leg in front, and Alessio has his left leg in front. So their front leg is very close to each other. It opens up the body kick uh, for each other. Oh, and Roman threw some punches and a uh, couple kicks that it looks like it really hurt Alessio de Churchio. And that's important when the fight is very even here to uh, start to do something that could dictate the pace of the round. And you see that now Alessio de Churchio has, has to respect Roman's power, where now Roman's feints and all of his attempted uh, punches and strikes, now he has to react because they might mean that he could get finished. So garnering the respect of your opponent is a major thing in fighting. Excuse me. 38 seconds left here in the first round. And um, so far you got to give it to Roman Kopolov in the red trunks for throwing some of those big uh, punches on Alicia's face. Oh, and a nice flying knee while... Alicia goes in for a single leg. They're scrambling here. Alicia's going in single leg, double leg, single leg, trying to do some chain wrestling. Good stuff here. And Roman is appropriately defending at each turn. I would like to see Roman um, have more of a sideways stance while he's on the cage here. But, oh, it was the last second or two of the round, so it didn't matter so much. But we've seen before where if – the hips face forward towards the opponent and the cage is right behind them, then um, that could be a good area to get to get a takedown on you. What you should be doing is you should stand sideways like this with the cage right behind you, and you could use the cage to your advantage. But if your feet are forward in this way, then 
it's easier to get taken down. So you got to make sure that you're doing the appropriate stance on the cage to avoid those takedowns. We're in the intermediary point between uh, both fights and or the intermediary point between both rounds. And so far, I got to give the first round to Roman. I've never seen either of these guys fight before. And so far, the Italian seems to be losing. It's all good, though. It happens. Yeah, you could definitely see Alessio, the, uh, the Italian guy, is definitely more cut up in the face. And now he, he wanted to do something to get his respect back, so he's charging forward and coming in with bombs and haymakers. But Roman is sort of taking advantage of this and doing a great counterfighting uh, example here and, and really kind of picking his shots. It looks that Roman is... Uh, managing the distance and really showing to be the superior fighter and striker here. Beautiful one, two from Roman right down the pipe. And uh, Alicia is really wearing some of this damage on his face. It's not catastrophic yet, but he has some cuts and some blood going on uh, under his eyes. The real problem is when the cuts come when they're above the eyebrows since there's not really any skin um, between this area of right above the eyebrow and the forehead so it's easily cut and uh, it will bleed into the person's eyes so that's a great tactic to kind of blind them blur their vision and start to get ahead in the fight um, both fighters looking a little bit even now Nothing majorly has happened in the last 30 seconds or so. Both kind of throwing some punches. And you see this kind of idea where Alessio wants to make this a grappling fight and uh, Roman wants to keep it striking, which makes sense. It seems that Alessio de Churchill on the green is losing the striking battle. And maybe he has some superior skills on the ground that could... Uh, win him the fight more so than losing this striking battle against Roman uh, Kopolov. It's interesting, too, that we've seen the same stance relationship. Oof, major strikes being traded right now. Great stuff there. Of um, Roman in the orthodox stance. I'm sorry, Alice, Alessio de Churchio in the orthodox stance and Roman Kopolov in the southpaw stance. And again, understanding the stance is very important to understanding what techniques you could do from that stance situation. Now we see Roman uh, get pushed up against the cage. This could be good for Alessio de Churchio as it, he showed last time to not have the best takedown defense on the cage. Yeah, his leg work could be better here um for his cage wrestling let's see if alicio de churchio can take advantage of this alicio de churchio taking advantage of this trying to reap the legs off of the cage but no takedown just yet roman really kind of uh showing a laxed easy kind of non-strict takedown defense, and uh, Alessio is not able to capitalize. Ooh, mean body kick from Roman Kopolov. This uh, stance orientation really sets up that body kick to the stomach for both fighters, um, and it's something to for sure take advantage of in this fight. I wonder if Roman um, knew about this and specifically planned uh, this strategy for, oh, a major slip. It seems in the same area of the octagon, Alessio de Churchio just completely loses his footing and falls on his back, and Roman just allows him to get back up. You could clearly see who wants this fight to be on the ground and who wants this fight to be um, in the standing position. Oh, and a nice knee from Alessio de Churchio opens up a cut on the nose of Roman Kopolov. And he is back in this fight here, even though we got 45 seconds left in the second round, and I give both rounds to Roman Kopolov as of right now. 
another big overhand right from Alessio De Churchio. And we have a fight on our hands. 30 seconds left in the second round. Alicia's got to do something big here or else he is going to be put in a position. Ooh, and Alicia gets touched and rocked um, by Roman with his great counter-striking measures here. Great stuff. And you can see uh, his head being more labored and him being affected by the techniques that are being thrown by Roman Coppola. So I give that second round to Roman as well. And uh, we got a commercial break right now, and they are going to go into the third round soon. Will Roman be able to um, close out this victory? I think so. He should ride this one. All the way to the bank, as they say. And um, it should be a rough night for Alessio de Churchio unless he could make something amazing happen in this third round. But it seems that he can't take down his opponent, uh, that his opponent can do some lackluster takedown defenses, not even threatened by the takedown, as well as uh, he's getting picked apart in the striking department. So the combination there of those two things do not uh, seem to serve Alicia de Churchio, my fellow Italian, very well. But maybe you could have a cannoli at the end of this and everything will be all right. So Alicia de Churchio comes out in the beginning of the round. You got to uh, respect that he comes out swinging, comes out strong, throwing some big strikes. Kind of looking for his puncher's chance kind of idea. He's not out of this fight. Comes with an upward elbow, Anderson Silva style. Um, trying to throw the kitchen sink at Roman Coppola. But Roman establishing his jab, uh, peppering the face. Boom, one, 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 two. And um, really cementing himself. Ooh, a beautiful one, two from Roman Coppola. Beautiful. And Alessio de Churchill is looking for a flying knee. But, man, oh, and that same side body kick from Roman Kopolov in this same stance orientation, um, orthodox versus southpaw, that body kick is open. You see Alessio have to drop his hands to defend the body kick, and now how this is setting up punches to the head. Oh, and he gets finished from this idea. He gets finished, beautiful finish by Roman Kopolov. He sets him up with the body kick. He makes him drop the hand. It's all from this stance. And then since he has to drop the hand, he comes across with some beautiful hooks, combinations to rock his jaw and wins the entire fight uh, from the setup of that body kick. Beautiful, beautiful stuff by uh, Roman Kapilov. And it's important to recognize, oh, look at this. They're doing the replay. They show the body kick right here. You see, he has to keep his hands down a little bit, and then boom, one, two, three, four uh, for Roman Kapilov, and he secures that victory. Oh, excellent stuff here from Roman Kapilov. Excellent striking. And let this be a lesson to this. This fight is a lesson to everybody that the Stance orientation matters so much when you are fighting. There's something called a closed stance, and there's something called an open stance. A closed stance is when both fighters are mirrored stances. They both have the exact same stance, either southpaw and southpaw or orthodox and orthodox. But a uh, open stance is when one is in southpaw and one is in orthodox. So their hips uh, face open. And in circumstances like this, you see that there's that front leg, leg kick available. The kicks are all major factors and components when this Ken Kenyatsu or open stance is uh, at play or is going on in the fight. So 
a very, very important thing to keep in mind. Well, that concludes that fight. A beautiful, striking victory for Roman Kopolov. And I will see you in the next one.